Alrighty. Things to buy. Episode two. Let's jump into it. I think I have fully stressed out my small MacBook Air with a butt ton of tabs. And I'm going to go through a certain number of campaigns. There's probably going to be campaigns that you were interested in that I have not gone over. And honestly, there's just so many. I'm not Alex. I'm not Shelf Clutter. I'm not all of the people who do so much good research and talk about stuff. I'm just me. I'm Devin. And I'm a fallible human. But what I'm going to do is I've organized Kickstarter and GameFound stuff. You guys did ask that it would be helpful to do a better job of maybe time stamping and then also maybe including an inset picture of the campaign. I don't think I currently have the setup capable. Maybe at my permanent studio, I will do this. I don't really have the kind of setup to record my screen and what I'm doing and then inset that into the video that you guys are watching. But I may try to do that for future videos in this series. For right now though, I'm gonna show you the campaign I'm talking about. I'm gonna give you timestamps when I'm at each campaign. And hopefully, unlike last time, it won't cut off. Man, these little lint chocolate things are delightful. I've organized these by funding level. Let's start at the top. Deep Rock Galactic, the board game. Timestamp. Deep Rock Galactic, the board game. Currently over $2 million funded, 14,000 backers. If you haven't heard of this at all and are wondering what in the world is this and how does it have over $2 million in funding, it is currently a video, it's based on the video game Deep Rock Galactic, which is pretty popular and I've played it personally. The reason why I think it's got such a wide base is the game is, at least on Xbox and Game Pass, it's currently free to play. Um, if you don't have Game Pass, you have to pay for it. And I don't know if, I don't know if on PS4, I don't know if the PS Plus giveaway monthly has ever given it for free, but I know that on Xbox, if you have Game Pass, it's free. I don't know about PC, but it has a wide player base because it's wildly it's widely accessible. And so I think that definitely has helped it get momentum as a board game adaptation. Now it's a one to four player co-op action cave crawler, which is why I have not backed this. It is a game I'd probably be interested in backing, but I haven't and I probably will not. Due to the fact that I have several large games already, I've got Kickstarters and crowdfunding campaigns of larger games already on the way. And I just don't know if I have the, the bandwidth or space to justify having another big box experience like this come into my house. I just recently got Eclipse. I recently got Mechs vs. Mi Minions. At PAX Unplugged, I bought a used copy of the deluxe version of Tidal Blades. So I've got those. I've already got the big box of Gloomhaven that I need to jump into. I've got the big box of Bloodborne that I need to continue in. I've got the big box game of Chronicles of Drunagor that I need to continue my campaign in. I've got the full, like the full pledge of Rainbow Six Siege coming in. And then I've got Oathsworn coming in at some point as well. So I just don't think it makes sense for me to get this game. Even though I like it as a video game, I think it's fun and enjoyable. And I think the different classes if they're done well in terms of seeing how they're adapted into a board game character, it could be a cool little asymmetric co-op, you know, video game, board game. But I just don't really see myself playing it or, give, or maybe justifying owning it. It's one to four players. It says it takes one to two and a half hours. Probably jump that up to 75 to... 180 minutes if we're being honest in terms of like what typically happens with games. But um, I mean, let's see the pledge levels. So you've got your pledge manager access for just, you know, one euro or, you know, two dollars or ish. Um, so that's a definite option if you're if you're wondering if you should jump into it, but you're not curious and you don't want to throw down that amount of money yet. If you get just the standard edition of the game, it's about 65 euros or about 74 dollars. And that's gonna give you just the base box and then all unlocked stretch goals. And that's gonna include some minis, but also some standees. It's gonna be a smaller miniature and you know plastic density amount that you're getting with that standard edition. The deluxe edition, which is about 110 pound or 110 euros, about $125, uh, that's gonna be the deluxe edition, which if I'm correct, yeah, your standard edition has four miniatures which are your people and then it's got standees for all of the monsters 
And then the deluxe edition has four miniatures, which are your people, and then all of the monsters that were standees in the standard, they're now miniatures. Um, so you switch the monsters from standees to miniatures with that deluxe thing. There might be a couple other small things, but that's the main thing. And then the collector's edition, which is 153 euros, and then about $175. That's got the what the deluxe has, which is the four dwarf miniatures, the original creatures uh, who were standees in the standard, and then bumped up to miniatures in the deluxe. And then it also includes a event marker that's a metal beer mug, and then it also includes an expansion, Goo from Above, which has more miniatures and more monsters. And then it also comes with a neoprene game mat and art prints, which if you know my experience with the Unsettled game, I don't care about art prints. But it also has, and this is one reason why, I wonder how many people have this one. Yeah, the Collector's Edition, 8,500 of the over 14,000 have the Collector's Edition. It also comes with a giant mouse pad, which if you play, you know, the P, you play it on PC, you know, that's going to attract a lot of, you know, players who get this nice deluxe, very wide. I mean, it's uh, 700 uh, millimeters long by 300 millimeters tall. So, like, you've got a lot of drag space for, you know, PC gamers who are pretty intense about their, their mouse play. It also comes with sleeves, and it comes with the STL files if you're the kind of person who has access to have personal printing for miniatures. So, you know, that's cool. But, yeah, that stuff comes in the collector's edition. In terms of best value for this one, I don't know. I know a lot of people went with the a lot of people went with the collector's edition. I, I think it might make sense to maybe go for the deluxe edition and then maybe the pledge manager. Like if you're uncertain, just do the pledge manager, get yourself access to it to where you can make a decision later. Honestly, I I would probably maybe just go with the standard edition. Because I don't know if I would mind the standees. People are very polarized on standees. Some people absolutely hate them. I, I don't mind them. Um, as long as they're like, okay. Like, that's fine for me. The difference of 45 euros and, you know, $50 just to get the monsters be plastic. That's a little, that's a little much for me. I don't know if I could justify that. I mean, I specifically, with Chronicles of Drunagor, I did not get the miniatures for the horsemen. I'll just have the standees because the miniatures themselves were gigantic and to get them for the main bosses was like an additional 50, 60, 70 dollars or something like that. I just couldn't justify that. Like, I don't need a big box that just has a bunch of miniatures in it um, to have for the visual you know, appeal. Um, so I would probably just do the pledge manager access or the standard edition. And the nice thing about the standard edition is if you want some of the stuff, I imagine there'll be add-ons. I would maybe get the standard edition and the and the game mat, just to where you could kind of have it as like a visual upgrade to what's going on. But that's Deep Rock Galactic, over $2 million. It's got 13 days left to go, which by the time this video comes out, it, it'll still be around. Next up, Kingdoms Forlorn, which like just came out, has 18 days to go, and once again, by the time this video comes out, we'll still be actively in the campaign. This has currently raised over three quarters of a million dollars. It's almost 800,000. This is one that I know that Jesse and Alex have both done content on. I haven't watched those videos, so I don't have really the context of their opinion, but I do know that this is being compared in some way to Kingdom Death Monster. It's described as an epic, massive board game from Into the Unknown, offering an immersive co-op and solo experience for one to four players. Once again, I don't need this. I, I just don't. I've got Chronicles of Drunagor. I've got Chronicles of Drunagor's expansion on the way. I've got Bloodborne. I've got Oathsworn on the way. I've got Gloomhaven. I don't need this. I'm not even going to attempt to look into it personally for myself. I mean, I'll look into it for you guys because that's what I'm here for. So you can pledge without a reward. It just says 10, 10 euros. Um, I don't know if that's uh, pledge manager access. It didn't say that. Um, it just says pledge without a reward. The core game pledge, just to, the core game is 139 euros about 160 US dollars. And that gets you the core game box of the Dragons, Devils, and Kings, and then the stretch goals. That's just, that is such a steep entry point. And I know for people that are maybe familiar with Kingdom Death Monster, they're like, no, that's not a steep entry point. $160 is totally reasonable. 
And you can also say, Devin, you spent over $400 on Rainbow Six Siege. Yes, because it's a tactical two-player game for based off of an IP that I absolutely love. So that made sense for me. This doesn't make sense for me. It just, it just doesn't. Uh, yeah, so at dawn, God created the world, and it was good. At dusk, he created man with an immortal soul, but weak to temptation. At night, darkness brought the devils out. Welcome to Kingdom Scoreline. So, you know, you got some interesting little flavor text there. It says, a truly tactical dungeon crawler, a truly cooperative adventure, a truly narrative-driven board game, truly epic. Yeah, I just, I don't feel the need. I mean, you know, currently... There's only a thousand backers out of the 5,000 that are doing the core game pledge. There's also an elite game pledge, which is 221 euros, about $250 or more. And that comes with the core game box and then the deluxe expansion. And that one has over 2,000 backers. So I'm guessing there's like 2,000 backers that have just done the pledge without a reward, I guess to get access to the pledge manager and decide at some other point. So their appeal to this is why back it now? You get it at a discounted price, you get it early, you want to influence the process maybe as a creative person, you wanna be part of something great. Like I think that's good, I just, I personally don't see the need for this. You can comment below you know, what you guys think if, if this has an appeal to you, but I just don't see the sense in this. I, I know it's it's going to continue to be a successful campaign. It's almost got $800,000. It's doing great right now. It's pro it's easily going to crest a million before the campaign's over. You know, I'm I'm not the kind of person who can do a good projection of where it will end. Um you you got a combination of what looks to be miniatures and acrylic standees. I really like acrylic standees. I've got them on Vagrant Song, which is another, you know, narrative campaign game that I need to play. Another reason why I shouldn't get this and, and don't plan to. Um, but, you know, they've got a combination there of these acrylic standees. And, you know, that stuff looks fine. And, like, the, the artwork is very, you know, grim, gothic, fantasy, kind of like, you know, Bloodborne or Dark Soulsy, similar and in fashion to what I assume people believe with, you know, Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah, I just, I just don't see the need for this. But it's doing really well. Um, if that $10 pledge allows you to have pledge manager access, that'd be my recommendation. Because the core pledge and the other one are pretty steep. So I would just probably want to get as much information as possible before I dove into this. Next campaign. Timestamp. Chocolate. Hand-to-hand -hand wombat. This is from the people that did Exploding Kittens. Why do I do this to myself? A game of teamwork, towers, and troublemakers. So this one is a game that is massively accessible to maybe non-gamers or people who don't have a lot of experience with hobbyist part of you know, the industry, but it's got social deduction in it. And it's kind of like people are trying to build up the towers. And then the person who is not trying to help, they're trying to discreetly hide amongst everybody else and mess up the towers. Close your eyes. The good wombats build towers. The bad wombats wreck them. Vote out the suspicious wombats. You know, it's done almost it's it's getting close ish to 700,000 it's got over 12,000 backers it's got 2 weeks to go so once again another campaign that will be here by the time this video comes out i don't think it's going to be too much editing to get the inset photos but we'll figure that out cuz i haven't ever done that before so it should be here by the time if you're interested in it this is one that i think i talked about last time in the last one but it's just you know it's done really well since i talked about it and <laughs> There's no correlation there. There's no correlation between it doing really well and me talking about it. But it's just another one that is currently active and I'm not going to get it. I might eventually have this game. I just, I don't see any sense in not waiting for retail because I don't think there's really, I think the stuff that was exclusive wasn't even game content. It was like a pouch that you has, has a picture on it and like retail edition, you get the hand-to-hand -hand wombat. So $22. Golden Wombat Edition, you get the retail of the game, and then you get a Golden Wombat pouch carrying case, and all unlock stretch goals, which I don't know what those are. The I Made This Edition, plus so you get some like books and a keychain, enough other stuff I, I don't care about. The Prototype Edition, and you get to like have a prototype of the game for $100. So none of those tiers I care about at all, or would I suggest. It's just like, I would, don't even know if I would suggest the retail, because you can just get it at retail. Uh, you know, I, I'm very excited that this game is, is coming out. And I think it's cool for the hobby. Um, I don't see any need to have it right now. Ooh, that brings us to Mind Management. Which has ugh, only 31 hours to go. I'm not entirely sure that it'll be here by the time I post this. 
Maybe I'll post this first and then I'll post the channel update next so that if, if there are ones that you're close on and you're interested in it, you can go check them out and hopefully they'll still be live. But there's currently only 31 hours to go. But Mind Management, which did I think around or less than $200,000 last time, the reprint for it is currently at over half a million and over 8,000 backers, which is awesome. I mean, this is to me the scenario in which a game that is really good doesn't necessarily have the beginning hype and once it comes out, it's beloved and it gets the hype after it's been published because people play it and really like it. I love it. Jesse loves it. Alex loves it. We've done content for it. You know, me, Allison, and Daniel have done a playthrough of it. So I am someone who really appreciates this because I think it's a fantastic hidden movement game. I think it does a good job of having easy, accessible versions and also really intense, intricate versions, but it also has a short playtime. I just think that's a really special game and I don't ever see myself really getting rid of it. And, you know, over 8,000 people. Obviously the shut up and sit down video has probably helped, but yeah, I think it's also just a lot of people in the industry have been talking about how good this game is and, you know, over half a million dollars. You've got, you've got a couple different things that you can do. Pledge a dollar and follow along with the campaign. You can pledge if you already have the game and you just want the secret mission cards that they have as kind of like the extra little expansion or exclusive content for this. That's just, you know, about $7 US. If you already have the game, but you want to upgrade the cardboard pieces to wooden pieces, that upgrade kit is only about $12. Then you've got the playing cards, like another kind of, uh, you know, pledge level add-on. If you already have the game and you already have the deluxe version like me, you could just get playing cards done from Matt Kent, which uh, I think are really cool. They look really nice. I, I'm thinking about joining and add, adding those on just because I like cards. I wish, I, I don't think they're going to be, but I kind of wish they were like that um, synthetic plastic type of card that Roxley uses because I would, I, there's, it's such nice art. I would want it to be, I, I wouldn't want it to get damaged. And then you have the $90 deluxe edition of the game, which that's a lot for a board game. And I know that it's really just a reprint for the deluxe edition. Um, the, the retail version I think is fine, but like the deluxe edition is, it's really nice. It's got a good game trays insert. It's got all the wooden pieces. It's got that nice shift system in, a, in, in organized little packs. It's really well done. It's it's a beautiful game. And also like Matt, what Matt did to make it look nicer in terms of just all of the extra artistic, you know, creative license he put into the design of the box. Super cool. Super cool. So excited that they are having such a successful campaign. For a smaller publisher like this, I think it's just life-giving. And so I'm super happy about that. Seas of Havoc. Um, this is from Rock Manor Games. Uh, you know, so Mike Nade and his and his team over there. Seas of Havoc, it's a naval combat game of deck building and worker placement, which is, that's a combination that I have thoroughly enjoyed with Dune Imperium, and I've also got Endless Winter on the way. I late, I late backed Endless Winter. Um, I missed the campaign and late backed it because I was just like, oof, the Miko and, you know, all of the designers that were in on that. I was just really excited about it, so um, I, I jumped in on that one. I have not backed this one. I haven't backed any of these that I'm looking at today, which I feel like good about. <laughs> I feel good about in terms of like, you know, saving money. But I haven't backed any campaign that I'm talking about today. But this one is Seas of Havoc, and it's got over $200,000. They had like a $30,000-ish dollar goal. They've had over 200000 almost 3,000 backers, seven days to go. So they got another week. They'll probably hit, you know, maybe three or 4,000 backers, maybe. Uh, I, I, I don't know how... I know that it gets a lot at the beginning and a lot at the end and not a lot in the middle for most campaigns. And just in terms of like, unless you're a very big campaign, like maybe that Deep Rock Galactic where you know you just have a massive audience to draw from even outside of the board game industry. Um, yeah, so this was a Cardboard Edison finalist in 2016. And it was a game design, and a Canadian game design winner in 2016. Interesting, but it's been six years ago. So I, I guess this is a design that they've had and has not come to fruition until now, which makes sense. Um, you can just get access to the campaign um, and the pledge manager access for $2. The 
may, like the Quartermaster Pledge, which I think is just the base copy of it, you get the, the game and the Sea Monster expansion for $65. So getting a, you know, an expansion at that first level, not bad. And then if you do another $24 and do $89 or more, you get the, cap, the Captain Pledge, which is the game, the Sea Monster expansion, and then one copy of the exclusive to Kickstarter Buried Treasure expansion with deluxe components, metal coins, additional ships, and captains. So that's probably the area where you got to figure out what's that stuff and, and, and what do you like. So at that level, you get two new captains, two wooden ships, two infamy tokens, two player boards, and six wooden skiffs. And then you upgrade your coin tokens, like your cardboard, to metal coins. And it gets two buildable wooden treasure chests for component storage. You get some, you get some extra stuff there for sure. Um, I know that people have done coverage of this game. I haven't watched it. I don't know really much about it. Oh, but Jeremy said it's so good. Just dig this at a con that I sat and played a full game twice. That's pretty good. Um, Ryan and Bethany from or Bethany from the Ryan and Bethany board game reviews. It's wonderful and great. I'm here for it. I'm invested in these ship captains. I like like I want to know their story. Cool. So it's got some good coverage. Um, it's also got other coverage that I haven't ever seen. So, you know, if you're interested in this, go out. I just, there, I'm kind of trying to be good right now about not backing stuff because I, I have a, a purchased a decent amount recently. I have a lot of Kickstarters that, you know, should be coming in um, this year. Uh, so I, I just, I don't feel the need currently to keep getting stuff. And because I haven't played it and I don't have, you know, a baseline of how I feel about it, I just don't want to back it for no reason. But it's, you know, it's a successful campaign for them, over $200,000. Um, and it's still got a week to go if you're interested. Trekking through history. Timestamp. So I talked about this one last time. Um, just was going to go back over it. This one has almost 3,500 backers, almost $200,000, um, which means they've got almost 10 times. They had a funding goal of 20,000. Again, I think this is visually a very beautiful game, and it's only you know fifty dollars for the game and a solo mode and an expansion, and that's a sixty-five dollar value. It says free shipping to the continental U.S. Woof, that's a pretty good deal. Prepaid VAT as well. Um, man, that, that that's pretty solid to get you know fifty for the expansion, the game, the solo mode. If this is your kind of game, like that sounds like a pretty good deal. So you get two Kickstarter exclusives: the Time Work expansion and the solo mode. And yet, yeah, just $50. And most all of the backers have that. Um, oh, they have an updated one, too. Oh, that must have been updated immediately because they only have three backers for that. Uh, you can also pledge without a reward, which it looks like some people did, maybe to get pledge man manager access or just to support them. You can see marvels around the world celebrate some of the... Where's, like, what? what is it, though? I don't want to watch a video. It's a game for two to four players, 30 to 60 minutes. So that, that fits in a good spot, 30 to 60 minutes. That's a really good space for games to get to the table. I think more frequently than most people give credit to a lot of their bigger games that they're like, oh, I'm going to play this, and then you don't. What's it about? That's so far down. Why do people do that? Like, tell, tell me what your game is early on. Trekking through history invites you to travel through time to experience beautiful moments from our past. Meet legendary people and join remarkable events as you try to see all you can before the clock runs out. You might learn a few things along the way. During your journey, you'll score points in multiple ways, including collecting experience tokens and visiting events in chronological order. You'll do this on a beautiful and colorful neoprene mat. This almost sounds like a historical, chronological version of like Takedo, like going in order, visiting, experiencing stuff, but it's just like history based. Marie Curie, that was her name. That's the first, I, the last time I talked about this, I tried to remember her name and I couldn't. And they have a card with her name on it, so. Looks interesting. Looks like you get a pretty darn good deal in terms of the game that you get for the value. Like a $50 pledge is pretty solid. And it looks like, you know, pretty much everybody is at that pledge because it looks like the only pledge that's there. But, you know, 10 days left to go. So once again, this should be available um, when you see this video if you're interested in trekking through history. Wreckland Run. Now, I'm not sure if this was available when I did my last video. It could have been, and I maybe already talked about it. But it's a solo game from the creators of Warp's Edge, which I have and haven't played yet. And so it's kind of like Mad Max in terms of the look of it, but it's a solo game. And it's got 150,000 or more in funding right now, over 2,000 backers, six days to go. So once again, this one should be available. It's by Scott Alms, who I think is the person who did Warp's Edge. 
some other ones too now that I think of it. But I just, yeah. Uh, Renegade is a great company. I like a lot of their games. But I know that I can get this at some other point. And if I'm trying to be good right now, there's just not much sense in me backing this when I can just order it from Renegade some other time or go to a convention where they've got it and get it. But if you're interested in it, they've got pledge of one or more where you get pledge manager access to, especially if you only want to get the Warps Edge Anomaly and other add-ons. So there's some stuff that you can get. They do have some content apparently within the campaign for Warps Edge. So if you want to just get that and you're not worried about this game, if you pledge $40, you can get the copy of Reckland Run and you get the Fallout expansion for free. So it's a $65 value apparently for $40. If you do $70 or more, you get the Reckland Run, all the extras, which seems to include sleeves for the cards and also the play mat. And then you get the Fallout expansion. And so that's a $105 value, but you're pledging 70. So that doesn't save too much more. The other one you save $25 if it's a $65 value. This one you save $35. So I guess you save $10 on the sleeves and the play mat. Um, and then if you do $90, oh, so this is also Warp's Edge content because there's a pledge here that you get everything Warp's Edge. You get the core game, the Viren expansion, the upgrade tokens, the play mat, the anomaly expansion, and the anomaly upgrade. And then Wreck and Roll is you get all of the Wreckland stuff from the nicer $70, and then you also get the Warp's Edge extra stuff. Then you get everything Warp's Edge and Wreckland run for $175, which is apparently a $235 value. So you get $60 off and you get everything of both games. So now I'm actually more curious because I have Warp's Edge. This is how they get you. I have Warp's Edge and I'm just kind of wondering about the, I don't need, I haven't even played the game yet. I haven't even played Warp's Edge. I do not need to look at this and get Warp's Edge stuff because I haven't even played the base game. I don't even know if I like it. I think I'll like it. I have an assumption that I'll like it. But I do not need to look at this because it's going to make me want the expansion content and I don't need to get it because I haven't played the base game. And Renegade, you know, it doesn't say that those things are all Kickstarter exclusive. So the odds are if I like that stuff, I can get it later on the Renegade website. But Reckland Run, solo game, Mad Max, cartoonish art, also with Warp's Edge content, specifically the Anomaly expansion and also all of the Warp's Edge stuff if you want it. Evolution New World, over $100,000, over 2,000 backers. This is based off of the Evolution series. It's a popular science board game, retroactive timestamp, and it's for two to four players, and 30 plus minutes. You know, it's got a solo mode if you get the all-in pledge. It says it was funded in four hours, so it's a good job. It's got seven days to go. It'll be around. I don't know much about this game at all. I think Jesse or Alex did content on this, I think. I, I don't have any interest in this. Um, maybe if I played it, I, my mind would change. But this is not something I'm going to ever jump in on without having played it prior. For $35, you can get the retail edition of the game, which I don't know how much the retail edition of the game is going to be, but if there is a retail edition of the game, I would probably just wait for that. Just because I'm just kind of at the point. I have enough Kickstarters. I don't need to get something if I can get it later. I, I just don't feel the need for it. Estimated delivery for this game is at the end of 2022. So it's just like, yeah, it's like, I'll wait and I'll just see if I want to play this and figure it out later. If you get the $50 version, you get the core game, the butterfly expansion, okay, and the Kickstarter exclusives. Yeah, I wouldn't do the retail edition of the game. Just get the game at retail. Now this Master of the Evolution that has its own specific extra stuff on it. Man, there's a lot of people that uh, talked about this. You've got Rado's talked about it. Jesse's talked about it. John Gets Games. Man vs. Meeple with Ryan. Uh, Game Brigade, which I think is also Brian, but I think he's Brian Greer. Carly Reinhard. Gambit TV. Love to Hate. Chits and Chats. Start to Game. Shelf No Shame. So the core game, you just get the, you know, you get all the cards and all the stuff that comes with it. And you get, you know, your tokens which look like they might be wooden actually oh and it comes with a plastic storage tray hopefully it's a decent one if you get 
you get it. So if you get that deluxe one, you get additional evolution cards, area cards, and alien boards for solo mode. And then you get all your tokens. So if you get a butterfly token and the butterfly effect expansion. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I don't see enough here that justifies me wanting this. They have an option where if you get two copies of the master, you save $5. So I guess if there's two of you that want this, but if there's two of you that want this, you probably live near each other, which is like, why would you get two copies? Just get one. Yeah, this is just not one I have a ton of interest in, but it, you know, it's successfully can, uh, funded and it's doing well for itself. And then this last one was just hype because why not? So Queen's Game, which you know, has a lot of Stefan Feld games, has a lot of like very popular Euro-y games has one called Old London Bridge, which it says build the Old London Bridge and become the best architect. It's had a $5,000 goal. It's got $40,000, 500 backers. So, you know, it's it's going to exist. It's got 65 hours to go, so it should be around by the time this video comes out. But I, I don't even want to talk about this. I, I have no interest in this. This just, Yeah, I, I have no interest in this game whatsoever. Uh, it visually doesn't look interesting to me. I haven't played really any Queen's Games titles. This is not my cup of tea. I don't even know why I kept it. And that brings us to the end of Kickstarter. So now we can hop on to GameFound. GameFound timestamp. Uh, there's not a lot that seem to be active on here. Um, one of the only ones that I have here is Tendaya from Red Mojo Games, which is successfully funded. They've more than doubled their goal of you know 28,000 euros and they're at over 63 now. So they funded, they're doing fine. They've got over 800 backers, you know, so they haven't crested a thousand backers yet. They probably will by the end of the campaign, but not yet. I've visually seen this advertised quite a bit on Facebook, I think. I don't know anything about this. I think maybe there's some content on Quackalope and other places, but I, I don't know anything about it. And I just, I don't have a, it, it, it doesn't appeal to me because I don't know about it. It's not something that I would have researched or looked up on my own. It's got some, you know, some nice visual art. I uh, kind of like the color schemes of kind of pastel, you know, rose and teal um, that seem to be going on from the volcano and the tidal waves. So, you know, there's some interesting stuff that it's got visually going on. From the look of the components and what's going on, it, it looks like a hex map construction and maybe it's area control or exploration. Um, each player must lead an aboriginal tribe in a world ruled by gods and shaped by natural disasters. During three eras, natives will settle evolved technologies and battle invaders. It sounds like Spirit Island meets Catan. I don't know. With some player board stuff that looks euro -y or kind of like Scythe maybe in terms of what the player board's doing. I don't have really any interest in it. There, there's really just... I think the one version of it, it, just the deluxe edition, which is maybe hurting its funding level that it's only got one version that you can buy, but for 78 euros, which is over $80, maybe 85 US, that's just a little much for me, especially for a game that I know nothing about. Um, kind of the rest of these are ones that aren't out yet, but will be out. And so will be out in a shorter period of time by the time you watch this than for me, some of these are four or five days or they don't have a date, but um, some of those will be two or three days by the time you see this 51st State Ultimate Edition. It combines the popular strategy card game and all its expansions, including the brand new No Man's Land, as well as hard to find promos and component upgrades in one box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to exit out of these Kickstarter campaign pages real quick to where my computer doesn't blow up. And then I'm going to go to Board Game Geek and I'm gonna look up 51st State because this is not a reprint, but like a relook. There was a master set of this that came out in 2016. It re-implements the original one that came out in 2010, which back then was a 6.8 game and ranked like 1,500-ish overall. The master set, which came out six years ago, is ranked in the low 300s overall on Board Game Geek, and it's got a 7.6 review. And the designer of this is Ignacy uh, Trzewiczek. 
I butchered that, but... So this is from Portal Games, and he has done notable games. He's done Robinson Crusoe, Predaporter, 51st State. He's done Detective, and he's also done Imperial Settlers. So he's got some heavy hitters in his, you know, pedigree of design. I don't know. Maybe this is one that I'll look at and, you know, give some interest to. I, I'd have to... I, I'd want to see if someone I know is doing it. I imagine, I think Z Garcia likes him as a designer and maybe he likes this game. I see some comments on here that already are talking about Z Garcia. So I'll, I'll have to look this up because I'm curious about it. Uh, I think, one sec, if I go back, Nurishima Hex, who did that? Was it Ignacy as well? No, that, yeah, Michael Warrock, okay. So 51st State coming out in about four days. I can't, you know, you can't see what the different pledge levels are gonna be, but it's one that I'm tentatively interested in. It's a card game, so I like card games, and this is like an ultimate edition, so you have a lot of different content within this box, um, you know, a lot, all the expansions and stuff. So, you know, the master set seems to increase the appreciation and the consistency of quality from the original 2010 to when that came out in 2016. So maybe six years later in 2022, maybe it's even more solid. I'm curious about it. Another one that's coming out in about five days is Lobotomy 2, um, which is a fully cooperative survival horror asylum crawler. Embrace your madness. Huge campaign. Tons of minis. Unique theme. Campaign plus sandbox. Upgradable gear. Inferno expansion. I'm, just, I'm not going to get this. Uh, I, just, I have too much stuff, and uh, I don't have any investment in this lobotomy world. I didn't even know there was a first one until I saw this second campaign. And once again, you know, because this is a preview, I can't see what the pledge levels are at. I mean, like, it, it visually looks like a cool, dark world, but I just don't see the need to, to get this one. Um, but once again, it's a bigger campaign for GameFound that's probably going to do well because I think the first one did over half a million dollars or something like that. So it'll probably do well, this second one. Uh, but I, I, it's, I don't feel the need for it. But that brings us to Last Light by uh, Roy Cannaday from Dice Tower. Um, you know, it's, so it says it is a true 4X space experience that can be played in an hour, seriously. Which I have heard this from... I. I had the chance to play this at Gen Con and I had a schedule conflict and I couldn't go. Um, but I know that Austin from IV Games and other people got to play it. And I trust Austin because he has a very similar taste in big space games to me. He likes Rebellion, he likes um, Twilight Imperium. And he enjoyed this and that excites me. The ability to have kind of the game that you want when you think of games like Twilight Imperium and Eclipse and all of that stuff. To be able to possibly play that in such a short span of time is so cool. Um, so I, I'm excited to look into this. I will say that visually, like the components don't excite me. It kind of looks a little bit like something that, uh, at least the planets, color-wise and style-wise, look like something that a kid might you know, make for a project. Um, so visually I don't love what's going on, but just that concept of a game that could be played in such a short span of time that is the type of game that I really love. I'm really excited about this. I'm interested to see how well this campaign does. There is not currently a date of when this starts, but it has almost 5,000 followers on GameFound, so that's a lot. And then the next one is Tamashi Chronicle of Ascend which I believe this was originally called Gaijin, but there is, you know, I, I think after some cultural consulting, I think they decided against that, and there's, you know, some connotation and some history to that that, that wasn't maybe the, what they wanted to bring in terms of the lens or perspective by that which people looked at this game. So this is Awaken Realms Light, which is, I, I think it's just supposed to be less expensive, more accessible, maybe because it's less expensive and not as intense, insane boxes. So it is a cyberpunk adventure board game with a post-apocalyptic vibe. So it's already got my interest. I am very curious to see more about this. Again, preview pages on GameFound don't allow you to see pledge levels. So I don't know where the entry points are cost-wise, but I'm excited about it. 
And then final one is one that is already in the pledge manager. The campaign is over and it's just a little bit of a regret for me because I think I would have really liked it. And it was the Four Glory Champions expansion and the second printing because it says play solo or with up to four players, but I think a lot of people like it as a two player game. And the fact that you can play it two player really well and it can function solo means that it's probably within my wheelhouse of the type of game that I would like and maybe get to the table quite a bit. So it says build a gladiator school in ancient Rome and clash in epic arena battles to seize glory, play solo or with up to four players. Jesse and Shira and Alex are all very fond of this game and they, they're impressed with it and they like the system. And so this is just a little bit of regret for me that I did not back this because I wanted to and I ultimately did not. And... uh Wait, add items to your pledge. Can I do that? Can I do that? Oh, I don't think I can. Oh, wait. Can I? I may do it. I don't know. Not right now. <laughs> but I might. I might do it. This is one that I kind of regret not backing. And I'm interested in, in learning more about it. I hope this was good. Maybe it was better than the last time. And maybe there was some insight that you appreciated in terms of the games that are on here. But I think that's it for me. This is probably another, probably the longest one I'll do today. And we'll see if I film another one. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. As I, this is evolving. This is, you know, still becoming a process in terms of how I do this. If the way that I currently have this done, which in my mind, I haven't done it yet, is timestamps and then inset photos as I talk about them. And then eventually I hopefully will get to the point where I can kind of have an inset recording of what I'm looking at while I'm talking about it. But for now, this is what I've got going on. Appreciate you guys being here. Thanks. Uh, again, I'm Devin from Devin Talks Tabletop, and I hope you guys have a good one. See ya.